Yellowstone National Park is famous for its beauty, its wildlife, and its supervolcano. It's so big and powerful that if it erupted, it could destroy everything around it and even affect the entire planet. And while it's normally pretty quiet, there are times when it lets out some steam. And that's what happened in 1985, when thousands of visitors came to see what was going on. But before we get into the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome videos about the world's amazing supervolcanoes. Yellowstone National Park is home to the Yellowstone Caldera, also known as the Yellowstone Supervolcano. It's one of the largest and most powerful volcanoes in the world. But don't worry, it's not dangerous. Well, maybe it is, but it's very, very far away. So we're safe, right? Wrong. In fact, according to the United States Geological Survey, or USGS, the chances of it erupting in our lifetime are actually quite high. They rate the chance of an eruption in the next 24,000 years at 6 to 14%. That means that there's a chance it might erupt sooner than expected. Yellowstone is one of the most active geothermal areas on Earth. There are over 10,000 hydrothermal features such as geysers, hot springs, and mud pots. The most famous of these is Old Faithful, which erupts every 90 minutes or so. But there are many others, such as the Grand Prismatic Spring and the Mammoth Hot Springs. These features are created by the heat from the magma chamber beneath the park. The magma chamber is a large body of molten rock that lies beneath the Earth's crust. It's what fuels the volcanic activity in Yellowstone. But it's not just magma. There's also a lot of water in there, too. In fact, there's so much water in the magma chamber that it makes up about 10% of all the water on Earth. This water comes from the rain and snow that falls on the park. It seeps into the ground and eventually makes its way into the magma chamber. There, it's heated by the magma and turns into steam. The steam builds up pressure and eventually it's released in the form of an eruption. Now, most of the time, these eruptions are small and only produce a little bit of ash and gas, but sometimes they can be big, like the one that happened in 1985. On October 23, 1985, at 1036 p.m., a magnitude 7.3 earthquake struck near the town of Cook City, Montana, about 45 miles from the park's northern border. While this was certainly a big deal, it wasn't the biggest news story that day. After all, earthquakes are pretty common in places like California. However, what happened next would make headlines around the world. As the earthquake shook the town, people felt their homes shake violently, but they assumed it was just a particularly violent tremor. Then the phone lines went down so they couldn't call anyone to find out what was going on. As the night wore on, the residents of Cook County began to feel uneasy. What if it wasn't just an earthquake? What if something else was happening? Something bigger? Something more dangerous? Their fears were confirmed the next morning when they went outside and saw that the sky was filled with ash. The air was thick with sulfur, and the ground was covered in a fine layer of gray dust. A massive eruption had occurred at Yellowstone National Park. In total, 54 separate earthquakes ranging from 2.9 to 7.3 on the Richter scale shook the region over a time frame of three days. At least 3 billion cubic feet of debris was ejected during the event. While it didn't reach the size of Mount St. Helens in Washington State in 1980, it was still significant enough to attract the attention of the media and the public. Most of the ash fell on the eastern side of the park, which is actually good news because that's where most of the tourists go. Had the winds been blowing in the other direction, the park could have been buried under a thick layer of ash. It's hard to say exactly how much damage the eruption caused because most of it was indirect. For example, the ash caused major problems for farmers who had to cancel their harvest. And the sulfur in the air led to the creation of thousands of acid rain. But even so, it's estimated that the total cost of the eruption was about $40 million. That's about $1 billion today. The eruption was caused by a buildup of pressure in the magma chamber beneath the park. When the pressure was finally released, it caused the eruption. Scientists are still trying to figure out exactly what caused the pressure to build up in the first place. 
but it's likely due to a combination of factors, including the movement of tectonic plates, the amount of water in the magma chamber, and the temperature of the magma itself. The USGS monitors Yellowstone National Park closely to try to predict when it might erupt again. They use a variety of methods to do this, including measuring the temperature of the ground, the amount of gas that's emitted from the park, and the frequency of earthquakes in the area. So far, they haven't been able to predict an eruption, but they're still trying. If Yellowstone were to erupt again, it could cause a lot of damage. The ash and gas would cover a large part of the United States, causing major problems for the people who live there. The whole country would likely be thrown into chaos. But it's important to remember that Yellowstone is a very big place. Even if there was an eruption, the damage wouldn't be felt everywhere. The areas closest to the park would be affected the worst, but the rest of the country would probably be fine. However, if the eruption was really big, then things would be a lot worse. Magma from the volcano would cover parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and even spread into parts of Nebraska, South Dakota, and North Dakota. People would need to leave their homes, and farms would be destroyed. The economy would likely suffer for years, and the environment would be damaged for even longer. Of course, the damage wouldn't be limited to just the United States. Ash and gas would spread around the world, disrupting the climate and causing widespread famine. It would be a global catastrophe. So what should you do if Yellowstone erupts? If you're in the United States, then the best thing you can do is to prepare ahead of time. Make sure you have enough food and water to last you and your family several weeks. Also, make sure you have a plan in place for where you would go and what you would do if you had to evacuate your home. If you're not in the United States, then the best thing you can do is to monitor the news. The eruption won't affect you directly, but it will likely have global implications. Yellowstone National Park is a beautiful place. It's home to all sorts of amazing geothermal features and wildlife. It's also one of the most potentially dangerous places on Earth. An eruption would cause a lot of damage, but it's not something that we should be worried about. The USGS monitors the volcano closely, and if there's ever a chance that it might erupt, they'll let everyone know. In the meantime, we can enjoy the park and all its wonders without worrying too much about what might happen in the future. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe so you never miss an exciting episode. See you next time.